The, the Treasurer didn't rule out immediately this week when he was asked by David Koch on Channel 7 whether he would could rule out any change on the capital gains tax exemption on the family home. A few hours later, uh, he, he did at a news conference when I put the comments made by the Prime Minister to him that same morning where he said, we're not doing it, exclamation mark, not happening. Anthony Albanese's instincts immediately were right. The Treasurer, he corrected them a few hours later, Stephen, but not a, not a great well, day for him. Look, when you, when you get into these situations where, unfortunately, Treasury had produced a document, which they're required to produce, which outlines a whole list of uh, tax concessions. As soon as you start saying yes to one, you, or no to one, you're going to get the list of the next 20. So I think, you know, if Jim was doing his best to try and not get drawn into that particular game, Albo made it clear. But just to give you the exact same example on the Liberal side, uh, I think Peter Stefanovic hammered Angus Taylor for five minutes about whether or not they would agree to repeal this measure after they won government. And Angus ducked and weaved and wouldn't give the commitment. Later in the day, Peter Dutton came out and said, absolutely, we'll repeal it. So, I mean, he had to clean up Angus's mess as much as Albo was making it really clear that we're not uh, going to go down the path around uh, houses. Yeah, I've got to say, though, I mean, that's a fair, fair effort, Stephen, but when you're talking about the family <laughs> home, I've been here for a long time now and uh, I cannot remember that's a politician lie, yeah. even allowing... A, a, a flicker of a possibility around touching the family home, Michael. <laughs> so 10 out of 10 to Stephen for that effort. Um, you can see why he was a successful minister for a long time, despite having to serve in <laughs> Kevin Rudd's government. But anyway, so, mate, um, Kieran, as you know, I, I've doubted for a long time whether Jim Chalmers is up to this job. I think he's a very presentable guy, looks good, sounds good, is good in front of a camera. But I'm just not sure how much substance is there. And I said on Paul Murray on Tuesday night that uh, they'd love to tax, that, you know, Labor in its heart would love to tax capital gains on the sale of the family home. And lo and behold, David Kosh asks him four times, not once, four times, and he can't answer. Now, as you say, Kieran, it's politics 101. In his heart, to rule it out, in his heart, this bloke, this bloke wants to tax capital gains on the family home. And my great doubt about him is this. Um, I think to be a successful treasurer of this country, you need academic intellectual brilliance. Costello had it. Keating, despite leaving uni at 14, had it. Howard had it. You have to be intellectually very, very gifted to be treasurer of this country. Now, um, Jim's, Jim's academic uh, uh, achievements are modest. Uh, I'm not, not decrying people who have an arts degree from Griffiths University or a degree in communications, as he has. But he's got no economic background in terms of in terms of study. He's worked for members of parliament as an advisor. He's never run a business. He's got a degree in Paul Keating's prime ministership. He's got no economic qualifications at all. And I'm afraid an arts degree from Griffiths University. What, what was John Howard? Uh, doesn't. What was John Howard's? What was Paul Keating's? And what was Peter Costello's? The three people you've just cited minimal yeah, to zero I, economic qualifications yeah. and the person with the least economic qualifications is called Peter Dutton. Zero. Well, 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 I, I, I think their records show that Howard Keating... If that's Keating a test, well... Well, hang on. Howard Keating Costello well, um, had intellectual, you know, intellectual excellence, as we've seen. Um, Costello, for example, won the tax prize at Monash in 1977. He didn't open, he didn't open a book for the whole year. Um, as, a lawyer, exam as a lawyer. As a lawyer. As a lawyer. Yeah, he won the tax prize. He won, he won the prize for the best tax student as a lawyer. I was sitting in the exam with him. He was sitting in front of me. He hadn't opened his textbook, Kieran, for the whole year. One of those books was you he, open. Was there's, he copying from no you? Marks, no, no. Was he, was he looking no, over he your shoulder? No, <laughs> no, if he'd copied from me, he would have only got a credit. But, um, but uh, you, know, <laughs> you know from their history, you know from their history that, that Costello and Howard and Keating had great intellects. You may have doubted them at the beginning, but their, their, his, their, their record as treasurers well, shows you... But that's you exactly the where we are today. You. But hang on, well, no, no, this bloke... That's this why bloke, your, your, the, your assessment you is this, deeply flawed. If, if you think this bloke... If you think this bloke is, is Paul Keating, you, you are sadly mistaken. As someone's written today, he's in the grand tradition of, of Wayne Swan, 
and a couple of other, you know, John Kerrin. That, that's, that's Jim's Yeah, no, Wayne Swan won, won the I'm International sure. Treasurer I'm of not, the Year I'm Award. Not, he actually won no, the sure. International Award for getting us through the global financial crisis. You, Pretty you, good you ridicule, actual you ridicule record. Greg Hunt. You ridiculed Greg Hunt when he was awarded the best minister in the world uh, several years ago, so don't play that tune. I just think Jim's performance... Yeah, but Swanee, today Swanee, took us through, Swanee took us through the global financial crisis. I'm just simply saying I don't think anything I've seen from Chalmers tells me that he's up to the job of being Treasurer. And if you want any evidence of that, the answer yesterday on David Koch's show shows you that he is completely out of his depth. As I said, it's 101 to rule out a tax on the capital game. It's not a list of 20. It's the top list on any... Uh, it's the top of anyone's lift list. If you're wanting to change the tax system, are you going to tax capital gains on the family home? And it would be an easy argument for Labor to say, if you bought a house for $18 million and sold it for $23 million, you should pay tax at the top margin rate on the $5 million capital gains. That's a typical Labor argument. You said it only affects 0.00 of the electorate. Why wouldn't Labor tax that? Because that's what's in Jim Charles' well, mind, KG. But let's hear... He's thinking let's to himself, let's hear, oh, Treasury yeah, have said to him, let's hear Stephen's people are making millions of dollars, you should tax yeah. that Treasurer. <laughs> So, Seriously. Stephen, your response now to Michael, there, because he, he's been, been no very, very critical of Jim Chalmers for a long time. Anyone, yeah. And, and if, he, if Michael was passing judgment on Howard, Keating or Costello in the first 12 months, he'd be saying all of those things about them, you know, if he was being non-partisan. He'd be saying exactly those things. Jim has come out to his first real budget and he'll be judged for the performance of the economy, the size of the deficit, the interest rates coming down, inflation coming down. All of those things will start to happen because he's got the right budgetary settings coming up in May. And that's how people will judge him. And Michael's been saying this from virtually day one. And it was wrong on day wrong on day one. And in 12 months and two years' time, people will look back at what Michael said and be embarrassed for Michael. Why, Stephen, why shouldn't <laughs> Labor tax capital gains on the sale of the family home? If someone buys for $18 million and sells two years later for $23 million, why shouldn't they pay tax on the $5 million profit, according to yes. Labor's thinking? Well, Labor, Labor's not going to do it. We've never said we were going to do it. But why shouldn't and they? I pre and 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 for getting the mixer out and really giving it a big wind up no, no, no. today, Michael. You know but it was it's not it, happening. When, and Jim didn't Chalmers say did it was going to happen. Chalmers, when Chalmers did that interview yesterday, it's in his mind, I don't want to rule this out. Four no, times, not. Koshy asked him. Well, well, Chalmers could have said, don't be ridiculous, we have no intention whatsoever, but he left it open four times. Yeah. And then, of course, Albo staff well, panicked. They rang Chalmers staff. Great panic, Albo <laughs> comes out, and then Chalmers has to come out. But this guy okay, didn't have better, the he's economic got a better labour sources than I do. He never had the political, <laughs> economic, or tax skills Michael. to rule this out. And neither, uh, and neither it's did great to see Costello. you. Uh, He's a lawyer. Stephen and, and Michael, you're both in great form today. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. I hope you have a great <laughs> afternoon, fellas. Thanks for that.